Morning Exercises, November 2nd. His Time in the Flesh. 1 Peter 4.2 Flesh is not to be taken here morally, but physically. It is not here used to signify our corruption, but our present existence. As when Paul says, The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It intends, therefore, our life while in the body. For we shall not be in it always. A period is approaching when the dust shall return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Our time in the flesh varies in circumstances with regard to individuals, but it has four general characters applicable to all the human race. First, it is checkered. The young may look forward and view life in the fascinations of hope, and the aged may look back and more congenially dwell on the gloomy than on the cheerful. And the same man, in the hour of present impression, may feel himself too much elated or too much depressed with his condition, but the truth is the same. It is neither a paradisical nor a wilderness scene. It is neither entirely dark nor light, but intermingled sunshine and shade. Who ever found life so smooth as to have no roughness? And who ever had sickness without ease, or sorrow without comfort? And who is now authorized to say, Tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant, or mine eye shall no more see good? Secondly, it is short and short not only as to eternity and the ages of men before the flood, but absolutely short. The general duration is three score years and ten. But much of this is nothing as to the superior purposes of our being. We do not mean business. This may not only be rendered consistent with religion, but is made by a Christian who abides with God in his calling a part of it. But there is the weakness of infancy and the childhood of age. There are deductions of needful sleep and allowed recreation and unavoidable intercourse. It is often also cut short. How few reach seventy, and those who do commonly look in vain to find any of the associates of their youth or their maturity. Everything expressive of brevity is seized by the sacred writers to hold forth the brevity of our time in the flesh. A flower, a flood, a tale, a dream, a vapor, a ship before the wind, an eagle pouncing on his prey. There is but a step between us and death. Thirdly, it is uncertain. How can it be otherwise when we consider the diseases and accidents to which we are continually exposed and the feebleness of our frame and the number and delicacy of the organs of which the body is composed? Sixty times every minute, as our pulse tells us, the question is asked whether we shall live or die. The fool in the gospel said, I have much goods laid up for many years. Soul, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But that very night his soul was required of him. Persons just ready to enter connected life have been called for marriage rites to attend funeral solemnities. The owners have been just ready to take possession of a new mansion, but have been carried to their long home. And the traveler, starting for his journey, 
is gone the way of all the earth. But fourthly, it is important, yea, all important, by reason of its relation to another and an eternal state. It is not only an introduction to this state, but a preparation for it. It is influentially connected with it, as the sowing with the harvest. Our thoughts, words, and actions are the seed, and whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The present is the only season of obtaining justification and renovation, title to heaven and a meetness for it. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. The same will apply to our doing good as well as to our gaining good. Our time in the flesh is the only season in which we can glorify God and serve our generation. What a treasure, then, is life, and how concerned should we be to work while it is day, seeing the night cometh wherein no man can work. In this one article, the saints below are more privileged than the saints above. And we are persuaded that those who have entered their rest would be willing, were it the pleasure of God, to come down and re-enter this veil of tears to have the opportunities of usefulness we enjoy. Who can be candid towards those who differ from us, forgive injuries, visit and relieve the afflicted, spread the gospel, teach the ignorant, save souls from death, and hide a multitude of sins. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest.